So here we have 5.6, properties of linear relations. So formulas give us rules to describe relations. So when we have a formula, it tells us exactly what the relationship between our two variables is going to be. And we can make formulas from three different types of variations. We've got words, tables, and graphs. So our formula is going to contain a few things. First thing we're going to have is our dependent and our independent variable. We're also going to need a rate of change and an initial cost, an initial amount. Now sometimes my initial amount could be zero. So my dependent variable, we're always going to call this our y variable. Our independent variable, we're going to call this our x variable. The rate of change will usually be indicated by the letter x, or sorry, k. And my initial amount will be indicated by the letter b. So we can kind of make a generic formula here of y equals kx plus b. So from this generic formula, you can take any set of words, any table of values, or any graph, and come up with a formula. So let's look at our first one here. We got words. The cost of a hockey season is $100 plus $5 per game you play. So the first thing you need to figure out is what's your dependent and your independent variables. They're going to be ideas, they're going to be concepts, they're going to be words. Never, ever, ever numbers. So if we look at our actual question here, we've got the cost of a hockey season is going to be one variable. And the number of games you play is going to be the second variable. Usually in a situation here, the first variable listed will be my dependent. And my second variable will be my independent. Now my k and my b, they're going to be numbers. The k is going to be the rate of change. The thing that happens over and over and over again, it's my multiplier. So is $100 to play or $5 per game going to be the multiplier? And it's going to be $5 per game. Every single game I play, I'm going to be charged 5 extra dollars. My initial amount, the amount I have to pay just to be part of the team, in this case is $100. So I can now put this into my formula, y equals kx plus b. The cost of the hockey season, I'll call that C, is going to be my rate of change, which is 5, times my independent variable, which is number of games, we'll call that G, plus my initial amount, which is 100. So my formula now becomes cost is $5 times every game I play, plus a hundred bucks. Now we could solve this a little bit more, say if we play 10 games, how much is the cost of the season? Just simply changing the games to 10 and pushing it through. So let's look at my table of values. What happens if I play zero games? So my cost would be five times zero plus 100. Well, 5 times 0 plus 100 would be $100. 0 and 100. What happens if I play, I don't know, 10 games? Let's choose some numbers that are easy for me. My cost would be 5 times 10 plus 100. Okay, well, 5 times 10 is 50, plus 100 is 150. So if I play 10 games, 
I've got $150. What if I play 20 games? My cost would be 5 times 20 plus 100. 5 times 20 is 100, and another 100 is 200. So if I play 20 games, my cost is 200. And let's do one more. What if I play 30 games? Cost would be 5 times 30 plus 100. So 5 times 30, that's 150, plus 100 is 250. So if I play 30 games, I've got $250 in costs. So now let's take a look at this. I need my dependent variable, an independent variable, a rate of change, and an initial amount. So when I have a table of values, and this is a vertical table of values, my first column, this is what we call my independent variable, my x. My second column is my y, my dependent variable. So my cost is independent, games is dependent. And if you look at my word, it's exactly what I had here, right? My games was my independent, my cost was my dependent. Now I need a rate of change and initial amount. So let's start with my initial amount, because it's the easier of the two. My initial amount is the cost when I play no games. If I play no games, I've got a hundred bucks which is what we had in words as well. And now my rate of change. What does each of these go up by? These go up by 50. What does each of these go up by? These go up by 10. So my rate of change will be 50 divided by 10, which is 5. 50 divided by 10, which is 5. That's exactly what we had before. So my formula here is my cost equals 5 rate of change times my games plus 100. The exact same formula came from my table of values. Now let's look at a graph. Well again, here are my points. I've got point, a point there, point there, there, and there. So what is my independent variable? My independent variable, again we call that, so my dependent variable is the y. My y is on my axis here, my cost. So my cost equals, what's my rate of change? My rate of change, same idea. How do I go from 100 to 150? I go up 50. How do I go from 0 to 10? 10, which is 5. 50 divided by 10 is 5. So my rate of change is 5. My independent variable, which is the x, is my games. And my initial cost is where the line, where the dots cross my y-axis, which is right here at 100. So plus 100. Same formula. Cost equals 5g plus 100. Variables come from my axes. Rate of change comes from going from one point to a second point and my initial cost is where it crosses the y-axis, in this case at 100. So how do I know if I have a linear relation? Well, what does the word linear mean? Linear simply means a straight line. How do I know if my graph will have a straight line, if it is a function? Well, on my table, if the change in both variables is constant. So let's look at my table here. Every time I went up by 50, that was constant. 
every time I went up by 10. That's constant. So it wasn't like I was going from 0 to 10 to 15 to 3. That wouldn't be constant. So we've got a change in both variables being constant. I've got a linear relation. Graph, if I have a straight line. Okay, well, if I took a straight line and connected these guys, I'll go with a blue pen. Yeah, that looks pretty straight to me. So I've got a linear relation. Now, to check from a words or formula, there really isn't an easy way. I would suggest you change those into a table or a graph and then find out from those two. So for the linear relation, a function, on a table, we've got constant change on both the variables. On a graph, do we get a straight line? Finally, let's take a little closer look at this idea of rate of change. Now, the rate of change we actually call slope. That's our mathematical name for it. And we'll look at slope a lot more in our previous, in our coming up units. But for now, let's look at how do we actually do a proper rate of change. So I need to select two points on my graph. So my graph is right here. You can see I've got my green points. I'm going to select any two. I'm going to select this one right here. I'm going to select this one right here. So the rate of change is the difference in my range. So difference in the range divided by the difference in my domain. So my range, if you remember, well that's my y variable, my y-axis. And my range, if you remember, that's the difference in my x-axis. So I have my two points. Let's figure out where they cross the y-axis. Well this one here comes all the way across and it goes at 250. Difference of course means subtraction. Where does this one cross? This one crosses at 150. So find out where they cross the y-axis and then find out where they cross the x-axis. I'm going to divide this by 30 minus 10. So difference, subtraction of my two points for the range, divided by the subtraction of my two points for the domain. 250 minus 150 is 100. 30 minus 10 is 20. And then finally, 100 divided by 20 equals 5. And that's exactly what we had in each of our examples here. We got it from the words. The cost per game. The multiplier was 5. When I looked at my table, I looked at the change in my cost divided by the change in my games. 50 divided by 10 was also 5. On my graph, when I went from one point to another point, I went up 50, cross 10, 50 by 10 is 5. All this is how we calculate a slope or a rate of change. Let's go to our textbook and let's go to page 308. Let's go 2 from the A's, 6 from the B's, and 1 from those C's.